Hello everyone, I hope you're all staying safe, healthy, and all well during this time. In my last speech on discovering an issue with mental health, I started off by advising everyone to make sure to stay healthy and by doing that and by taking care of their physical health as well as their mental health while we are in quarantine. Um, so I would like to continue on this path with physical health versus mental health, mostly on mental health, because I believe a lot of people prioritize their physical health over their mental health when that really shouldn't be the case and should be treated equally. So again, um, the two are actually closely connected and therefore should not be treated as separate entities. Mental health plays a larger role in maintaining good physical health, but unfortunately, physical health is prioritized more than mental health, like I just said, and creating an imbalance for a person's well-being. In order for your life to have balance, there needs to be an equal amount of urgency and care in both areas, and that's from professionals and from affected individuals. A person's mental state can determine his or her physical health. However, it also works the other way around. A person's physical health can determine a person's state of mental health. And this is like in that movie Stronger where Jeff Bauman was in the Boston bombings and he lost both of his legs. And because of his um, physical disabilities with that and having to overcome losing both his legs, he developed a lot of mental problems with that and had to overcome that as well. Um, the two are closely related in contributing to a person's welfare and are equally important. They're really like interchangeable with one another with um, how they affect each other back and forth. Mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being, and it affects how we think, feel, and act. Although our mental state is as important as our physical bodies, remedies for a person's physical health are more available than for their mental health. According to the National Council for Behavioral Health, states are struggling to keep up with demand for mental health care and services due to lack of funding and facilities. There is also a large disparity in obtainability to mental health care based on level of income and location. Compared to middle and high income households, um, low income Americans are less likely to know where to go for treatment and more likely to use a community center rather than a qualified mental health center. Of the Americans that have not sought mental health treatment, more than half were in low income households and they generally do not have the insurance that provides treatment for mental health. Um, and those living in rural areas rather than urban areas um, are also less likely to have access to mental health due to the lack of knowledge of it. Uh, the Cohen uh, Veterans Network and National Council for Behavioral Health believe that more must be done to improve care for everyday Americans. Specifically, younger Americans need more information on how and where to find help since mental health issues have been on the rise for them, and they are not usually advised on what to do and where to get help. Um, the lack of discussing possible mental problems or wanting to address them is also due to the social stigma linked to mental health and mental illness. In historic writings, mental illness was viewed as a religious punishment or as a demonic possession of that person. This background on views of mental health issues started the negative stigma linked to mental health. People are afraid to be a part of a stigmatized group and be judged for it. According to the National Council for Behavioral Health, about one third of Americans have worried about others judging them when they have sought mental health services, and over a fifth have lied to avoid telling people they were seeking mental health services. Uh, with this instilled fear of being judged on their mental health, people are unable to get the help they need and are left to suffer. Access to care for physical care is important and more readily available, but access to mental health services is equally important but is very limited. In order to normalize discussing mental health struggles and reaching out for help, we should practice more empathy and understanding towards our loved ones as a society. 
we all need to do this. By practicing empathy, it will create a community where everyone can live together in harmony and feel more comfortable to be more open to the world. There should be more treatment offered to those suffering from mental illness and students should be educated on resources available, whether that is through school or outside sources. Students will then know how to reach out and get professional help. But to stop the stigma, we should stop labeling and being insensitive towards those with mental health problems. Mental health is important at every stage of life, and that's from childhood and adolescence through adulthood, and it should be treated as such. Thank you so much and have a great day.